Posey for the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute's Oral History Project by Benny Miles at Miles College on March 15, 1996 at 3 p.m. How are you, Matthew? Fine, and you? Doing good, doing good. Um, you are from Birmingham? Yes, I am. You are from a large family. Let's talk about your sisters and brothers. How many of you are there? It was eight of us. Eight? And two are deceased. Okay. Where'd you live? What section of the city? Uh, we were born and raised on the south side of Birmingham. Okay. On 6th Avenue South. Oh, is that like uh, West End, Titusville? What's, what it's we... considered the South Side, uh, near Titusville. Um, I'm right there where the freeway comes off on 6th Avenue, where the New Pilgrim Baptist Church old site is. Okay. Yes. I was born and raised right there. Okay. That must have been a very interesting time for you, yes. an interesting area. Yes. Uh, where do you come in? There are eight kids. You in the middle or the oldest? I'm the fourth. Younger? I'm one of the fourth children. Where'd you go to school, elementary school? Uh, I started at the uh, Our Lady of Fatima on 6th Avenue, where the uh, Children's Hospital is now. Okay. And uh, I left there and went to Lang Elementary. So you were at Fatima at um, elementary school That's first? That's where I, I started, yes. Uh -huh. And then I ended up at Lang. I graduated from Lang and went to Ullman. And I completed my high school education there at Ullman. Let, let's talk about... Um, Fat Lane a little bit. What what kind of school? What kind of area was it uh, during that during that time? It was um, it was a nice area. It's um, like I stayed on six, and it was on like between fifth. I mean fourth and third, and so it was like in walking distance to schools. So that was good. Yes, yes. What about the teachers and the and the training? At that time, schools were segregated or integrated. When you they were, were segregated, there were no whites at our school. Mm -hmm. Yes. And my teachers, they was like mothers and fathers to me, you know. And uh, that's bringing in a very interesting uh, question because of the idea. Uh, during the time of the civil rights, uh, most of my teachers attended 16th Street Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, I did a lot of singing. And most of my neighbors, uh, people that knew me, would ask me to sing at some of their family's funerals. Okay. So that's what prompted me to be in the area when the bombing of the 16th Street Church occurred because I was on a funeral at Bradford. Okay. Well, let's, let's go back okay. to when you were in school a little okay. bit and talk about, you mentioned about your teachers were like uh, your family. mom. They yes. were like family. Yes. What kind of training, what was the educational process like at um, Lane? Do you think it was superior? Was it okay or was it good? You didn't maybe have much to compare it with, but in the training that you received during that time, how was it? Uh, to my knowledge, it was good. I think uh, my teachers uh, did every effort they could for each and every child because of the fact uh, I had teachers, uh, like, uh, just for an example, the younger teachers we didn't have. We had older teachers, you know, with the, the strong backbone, you know. Okay. And teachers that was concerned. And as I see now in this day and time, you know, these kids, they go to school, at 11 o'clock, at 2 o'clock, they're back at home. We went from 8 in the morning until 3.30 and 4 o'clock in the evenings. And we had homework. We had books. We carried a whole lot. And uh, if the teacher saw that you was not doing your work, they would, you know, roll up their sleeves and willing to jump in and make sure, you know, you know, like cram this, you know, education into your heads, you know. But the kids now, you know, they just, you know, relaxed, you know. So you think that then it was much better, as for even it, though it was segregated, the quality of education was there, the concern was there. But with the children, I think the other part of that seems like what you're saying, you had the children respected their, their teachers. teachers. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So after Lane, you went to Allman High School. Yes. Do you remember, uh, let's say at Lane, do you remember any of your teachers there and how they were, well, strict disciplinarians and yes. good educators? Yes. And do you owe a lot to them in terms oh, yes. of what you... Oh, yes. As I see some of them now, one of them is a member of my church, and uh, I have quite a few that uh, I respected and I still ask about, I don't see anymore, but... Uh, 
I stayed in California about 32 years, left Birmingham and went to California. But each year I was here on vacation, you know. And every time I came, I would always go back to my schools and see my teachers and they would hug me and welcome me. And I was, you know, looking at their progress and they were looking at mine. And, you know, it was just a bond between us. So know? at Lane, you would come, you would go back and visit oh, yeah. there? every year, every year. Until the school closed. <laughs> then you went to Ullman High School yes. from Lane, you said. Yeah. What was the educational process like there? Was that an integrated school then, or was no, it still? No, it okay, was still was it all black? And yes. What, what, were, what was the principal like? What was the training like? Well, he was like a, a, a security guard as far as the halls was concerned. Uh, George Bell was my principal at Ullman. So he was a... Yes, yes. He was a and small he, man. But oh, he, yeah, but he, he was very strict. And everybody respected him for that. Mm -hmm. Yes. What about the teachers and how, was, how were things then? Well, uh, they were uh, extremely, you know, good as far as my opinion of them were. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, my education continued. I didn't long for anything. And if I had any questions, anything, I could go to them. And uh, if they caught me doing anything, they would come to me and, you know, jack me up. Mm -hmm. But uh, I respected my teaching and admired them, all of them. And when you would, when you left, you would come back and oh, visit yes, Auburn yes, High School. Yes, yes, yes. Did you find that many people at, during that era, when they did leave Birmingham, would come back to visit, they would go by their oh, yes. school? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, mm -hmm. yes. You, you said you went to church in that same community. Yes. New Pilgrim Church, New Pilgrim Yeah, Baptist I'm a church. member of New Pilgrim now, but my home church, when I was baptized, I started out at uh, Sixth Avenue Baptist under Good Gain Jr., Reverend Good Gain Jr. And then when he died, I moved my membership to New Pilgrim, and I've been there ever since, you know, while I'm in Birmingham. So now at Sixth Avenue, was the movement alive during that time? Can you remember yes, anything? Yes, that, yes. Tell us a little bit about the movement during that time at Sixth Avenue. What do you recall? Okay. Um, um, the movement was started, and like I said, during the time of the bombing, because the, the kids that was, some of the kids, okay, three of them that was bombed, was killed in the bombing, they, filmed, they were feminized at Sixth Avenue. Okay. And at that time, like I said, I was a member there. And uh, I started uh, working with the youth at Sixth Avenue, and at the time was asked to be an usher during the kids' funeral at the church, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the movement was centered in our neighborhood because uh, most of the movement meetings was held at New Pilgrim. And by me being a neighborhood person, I live in that community, I didn't know at first what they were talking about when they said movement. I thought it was a movie like you go downtown and look at. Mm -hmm. So I became inquisitive. And my grandmother did not want me to take part in this at all. What, what did she say? What, about what age were you? Were you still in high school? I was school? around 13, 14. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And uh, I snuck out and went over to New Pilgrim. And I mean, the cars was everywhere, crowds and people were gathering and you could hear music, you know, good singing and uh, people talking and everything. And so I'm trying to find out what's going on. And so I snuck, snuck over. Mm -hmm. And as I went in, I think it's the first time I heard Martin Luther King speak. Let's, let's go back just a moment. Okay. You, before you went over to New Pilgrim, and you were at 6th Avenue yes. during the bombings, yes. and you said that you were an usher. At the funeral okay. of three of the girls that was killed in the bombing. What was it like? Do you recall when you were an usher, when people were coming in, the emotions or the people, what did they say? And it was, was a dark day in our city, and as far as history, uh, it's, 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 it's something that you could not, you know, describe, you know, but you could see the hurt, the, uh, the danger that people might feel still, you know, in regards to this film. But by me being a child, I didn't really know, but I was willing to do whatever I could, I thought, that I could make a difference, you know. In other words, whatever I could do to help these families, you know, sure. because I realized what had happened, you know. And like I said, you know, it was people everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the most that you could do is just, you know, give your sympathy. Uh, you, know, you know, try not to show too much emotion for the simple reason they were already breaking down. And you, know? you by you being a young yeah. man, you were yes. an usher. Yes, so. I was just trying to do what I could to make them comfortable, you know, there at the church. Were you frightened at all? Because I would imagine... 
at yes. that time. There were so many people, so many cars, a lot of security. Were you frightened? And did yes, you hear I was. But uh, like I say, you know, I was an ambitious person as, you know, a child. And like I had listened to Martin Luther King and I had heard his speeches. And somehow it all soaked into my head, you know, that, you know, if a man hadn't found anything fit to live for, he wasn't fit. Uh, uh, if he hadn't found anything fit to die for, then he wasn't fit to live for. And some of those things soaked in that I just felt like I was in uh, company. Uh, wasn't nothing going to happen to me, okay. you know, you know by, by listening to him, you know. And listening to him said being nonviolent, you know, regardless of what someone did to you, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what about during that time, too? You, you, you were, um, you had other brothers and sisters. Do you recall your, your mom or your dad or your sisters and brothers talking about anything? Were they interested in the movement also? What did they say? Well, they, they kind of got, uh, my grandmother kind of got to them. I'm the only one in my family that participated. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to go to school and uh, answer to the role. And, you know, take off and go on to 16th Street, register, and go over in Kelly Ingram and line up and get ready to go down to Newberry's and demonstrate. So this was while you were in school yes. at Ullman? Ullman. at Ullman. And, and you would go to school your class? School and answer roll. And were you, did you have several classes you had to go to or just the one class? Well, what I did was I would uh, go to uh, each one of them. You know, but see, most of my teachers at that particular time, now I might, not, I might be wrong for saying this. No, but, you're saying Okay, you're... most of my teachers at that time, they covered for us at mm -hmm. that time, okay? Because they couldn't leave, but they yeah. wanted you, okay. Yeah, okay. And we had already been warned that if we did not come to school, we would be suspended. Who, who told you that? Or we was warned by the principals and some of the advisors of the schools and things like that, but that didn't stop us. But do you think that they said that because they didn't want you to participate, or did they say that more because they were concerned and they were fearful for they, you? They were fearful for their jobs and fearful for maybe our school getting bombed and stuff like this. But uh, like uh, the teachers, some of my teachers, okay, I'm not going to say all, mm -hmm. but they, they left it up to us to make the decision, you know, mm -hmm. if we did want it to. They would be there for us. And say that you were at school yes, if anybody yes, called. Yes, yes, yes. So do you remember how many of you went? Well, in my neighborhood, it was about six or seven of us that, you know, like the people went that I... Went to school together. Yes, uh -huh. yes, that I was with, but I, there were other people in my area sure, sure. that was participating. You know, after we get down there, we would see them. So give me a, a scenario. Give me, tell us about one day when you were at Ullman, you answered the role, and then you got yourself together, and you and who told you where to be, and what time were you to be there, and what was going to happen? Just take us through that. Well, okay, uh, no one from the school told us anything. Uh, there was not okay during the time of the mass meeting. Once I found out what was happening and got the you know scope on what to do and what was being done, uh, we as you know kids decided that this is something that we wanted to be a part of. Okay, okay. each day was my regular routine, and uh, there was no movement meetings that we did not attend, you know, mm -hmm. uh, even though we didn't have transportation, but, but during that time, you know, we would get together as a group and we would walk, even if the movement was on uh, at 16th Street, we would walk from the south side to downtown to 16th Street. Mm -hmm. If it was over in Cottageville, we would walk, you know, because we knew how to cut through the shortcuts and get there, you know. Yeah. And um, what we would do is every day when there was a demonstration, which this was like every day too, okay, I would go, you know, when I get ready to go to school, I would dress like I'm going to school, you know, to fool grandmother. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would put short pants into my book bag and, you know, dry shoes and socks and stuff because we was prepared for when we got downtown, we would have to go over in Keller Ingram's Park. That's when they was putting the hoses in the dog. So if we got wet, we would have, you know, dry, dry clothes, clothes to put on. What about Newberry's? Did, did you go to Newberry's before? Or after you, you mentioned about Newberries. Okay, uh, we pick it Newberries, Pizzits, and Lobmans. Depending on how many there was of us, we would break up in groups. You know, some would be across the street at Pizzits, some would be over at Lobman, some would be at Newberries. But we would be in that whole predominant that area. area. Yes. Did you get an opportunity, if you will, uh, to go to each one? Yes. 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 Give me. Uh, tell us. Walk us through. Okay. Each before door. before they. Uh, 
changed the um, the signs in Newberry's on the lunch counter, mm -hmm. we were the main ones every day that sit and sang in the fort, right where the seats are. What we did were. the sign say? The sign said, uh, we are tired of, of uh, uh, being treated uh, unfair, we are nonviolent, uh, we want to change, we want to make a change, okay, uh, those we want freedom. Uh, we want, we had, you know, signs that said change uh, the black, the white signs to black, uh, no, you know, black and white signs and all this. So in New Bears, they had signs that no color can be served and oh, no yeah, blacks. Oh, yeah, whites what only. Whites only. And then when you went in there, you moved the signs or you just sat in the seat? T t oh, no, no, no. We, 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 in other words, we barcarded it. In other words, they could not even get to the seats. Okay. We back out. They could not even get to see. And then I've had an incident where they have come by and just grabbed me by the back of my shirts and just pulled me down. When you say they, they, who's that? Uh, some white people that was coming into the store, you know, that was patronizing New Paris. Oh, really? They spit in my hair. They slapped me and all kinds of stuff. But, I, you know, it didn't stop me, you know. And then we just kept right on saying we ain't going to let nobody turn us around, you know. And where you said, oh, my God, my grandmother's going to kill me if she finds out well, if I get locked up. Or well, you? every time I saw a camera, what I would do is I would turn my head so that she wouldn't notice that it was me, you know. Uh -huh. And like I said, we disguised ourselves because I left home with one kind of clothing on. But when I got down there, I would change into something else. You know, not that uh, I was afraid of what I was doing. I was just, you know, I didn't know what would happen to me, you know, by being a child, but inquisitive. But I'm going to do what I think is right as far as the movement was concerned. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be a part of that movement, you know, because I understood what he was saying. And I knew some, it took some people or somebody to make this change, you know. That's true. Yeah. Now, that was the, a day in Newberry's. Give us a day in one of the other places. Okay, the days in the other places, we were like, you know, outside of, on the streets as they enter into the store. And we were, you know, like Bob Harden, and uh, stopping the people from, you know, trying to keep them from going across, like, like a picket line, trying to cross a picket line. And this was that, which store? Pizzitz and Lovins. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And Newberry was in between them. Did anybody say, what did they say to you when you were at Pizzitz or at Lovins picketing? What did uh, people You know, uh, racial slurs and, you know, uh, you need to stop doing this. Uh, you know, you know, just, 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 just uh, slurs, you know. Did you think about... Uh, what you'd like to do to somebody when you said racial slurs, they called you black well, or they well, called you? Well, a lot of times it might have crossed my mind, but like I said, I never did forget the teachings of Dr. King when he said, uh, be nonviolent, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I knew we were, uh, were there with protection, you know. We didn't go alone. We had uh, escorts each time we went down, you know. Mm -hmm. The older people were there to see that we weren't really brutally, you know, mistreated, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we signed up each day that if the police came and took us to jail, they had our name to know that we were arrested and somebody would come and get us out and, you know, and stuff like that. So it was just like uh, mama there protecting me, you know. Yeah. And so I wasn't really afraid. But, you know, as these things happen, you have to do because, you know, even the workshop, they taught you when you were going to demonstrate what to do in a situation, you know, in case one occurred, you know. You said that your grandmother was able to talk the rest of your sisters and brothers out of participating. And did you ever share with them once you got back home and said, well, guess what I did today? Or yeah. what did you tell them and what was their reaction? Yes, uh, I have. And uh, they was uh, supportive of what I was doing. But uh, they was trying to stay in the dark about it. And they never did share the secrets of what I told them with my grandmother. But they was very supportive of me, you know. And if they couldn't go, they was glad that I was able to go, you know. And I've had now my sister, the one that's, you know, Elizabeth, she almost went. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was, like I said, slayed behind, you know. My, my grandmother would, you know, she would catch on to them, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when she did catch on to me, it was just too late, you know. She couldn't stop what me. Did, how did she catch on to you? <laughs> what did she say? Well... Other people that, you know, like uh, I had cousins and things that worked downtown at some of those stores and they saw me down there, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, they pulled me to the side. But I still continued on as to what I was doing, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when the word got back to her, I was chastised. But at, at the point, it just couldn't stop me, you know. You said it couldn't stop you. You were always inquisitive. And what was it that made you so inquisitive about 
the movement. Okay, um, I'm proud of my race. I'm a black, okay? And I realized what Dr. King was fighting for, you know? And I know, you know, my background, where I come from, the South and all of this, and how racially involved it, you know, it was, you know? And uh, I felt like I was doing something as far as my family was concerned to make a difference. Like I said, no one in my family did participate but me. But like I said, I have kids now and as I look back over what we did do as a race and Dr. King being a part of it, my kids now have an opportunity that I did not have, you know? And I have a son now that's an entrepreneur, you know, and he deals with all these type of racial issues. And I also tell him a lot of times, if you only knew, he feel like he can get rich overnight. And I tell him, you know, it takes time, you know? And, mm -hmm. uh, he just throws away money, you know. And I have a grandmother that she fed a family of eight with mm. one dollar. You see what I'm saying? Really? And so what I'm got, trying to get him to understand that it's not the money that you have. It's what you do with the money that you get, you know. And uh, I just don't bother him anymore because, like I say, I raised him and he should be able to think on his own. But uh, I just want him to know where, where we did come from. When you talk about being in business and looking back then as it is now, do you, I'm sure you shared with your son how it was for you and, and the pickets and all that. Oh. And what has he said when you, when you talk to him and, and when you talk with other young adults? That uh, they're like, oh, that didn't really happen or? Well, right now today, just like in my community, um, I look at the kids and I tell them, like, uh, I share some of the stories of my life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, during the time like when I was going to school and I saw um, different uh, people in my neighborhood, um, whatever they saw me doing, they would go back and tell my grandma, not only that, they would whoop me or chastise me before. <laughs> and when I got home, I got another whoop. But the kids today are just really uh, rudely out of control, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as school is concerned, we had a truant officer named Miss McQueen. Wherever she saw you at on the street, she picked you up. Mm -hmm. And mothers that didn't want to whoop their kids, I've seen police pick them up and take them home, stand there and make the parents, you know, chastise. Not that it was child abuse. Mm -hmm. There's but, a difference. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we have to, you know, understand that, you know, when you have kids, if you just let them out of control, you know, it's nothing that you can do after so far, you know. But my kids that I do talk to now, just letting them know that I'm there for them and they have someone that they can come and talk to, uh, it gets over to them, you know, okay. because the average kid that I do talk to that are out of control, that kid is out there looking for what he's not getting at home. Yeah. And that peer pressure that their friends give them, they have more respect for them than they do their families, you know. Mm -hmm. When you look at the movement, then, what do you think it did for people that people can use? What do you, what do you think? What did it do for you? Okay, what it did for me, it made a change in the city that I was born and raised in. Okay, not only a change in this city, it woke up a lot of eyes and minds in other cities. Uh, Birmingham as a whole to me now has come a long way, but now I really think that they shouldn't have let up. Okay, they let up too soon. And what way, when you said they shouldn't have let up, what did they put Okay, out? after uh, Dr. King's death and all, they, they stopped. Okay, I feel like they should have continued on with the movement mm -hmm. for the simple reason, uh, out of all the work that we had done, it set us back a few years. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, it's a few things now still laying and lingering that needs to be addressed, but... Uh, it's going to take time for it to be done, but I think if we had to continue on fighting for the same cause that uh, King was, you know, working toward, and we was making good progress, mm -hmm. but by this gap now, it, it kind of set us back a little, you know, that I feel. Yeah. Uh -huh. What do you think of the movement today? Do you think... Um... It's laxed. It's laxed. What does it it's mean? Not, it's, not, it's not fired up. Uh, it's not uh, uh, 
doesn't, it doesn't have, have that point now. Yeah, it has yeah, that energy. Yeah. Like yes, that. yes, it's laxed. It's just like if you was a member of a sorority or the Eastern Stars or something. It's laxed, okay? But see, at that time, it was fired up, okay? What do you think will get it fired up? Well, it's going to take another person like Dr. King and a person, you know, um, like, I, I don't know. The people needs to, I mean, get right back out there and roll up sleeves up and get back to work, you know, mm -hmm. on, on issues, you know. It's a lot of things now, just like the, uh, um, 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 just lost your train. It'll yes, come back to you. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it just needs to get back uh, that, that real involvement. Yeah. Is there any person that you think, in your personal opinion, could get that energy back, could, could get that, uh, that need, that punch or whatever it's needed, that you think of recognizable leaders or not so recognizable? Local or national leaders. Somebody well, you that know, can get I, I have very high respect and uh, uh, for uh, Andrew Young and uh, uh, Jesse Jackson, mm -hmm. and uh, I feel like at the time I was, you know, I was young then when I was demonstrating along with them and going to the workshop. But I feel like um, uh, Jesse would be a good one to, you know, get started, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, right offhand, I, I, I don't know because, like I said, everything has laxed now, you know. During the time that I was, you know, involved. Now, I'm still a member of the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights and the SCLC. And I, you know, still work with the projects of things that they might be doing, you know. But uh, I, they're just not doing anything really, you know, mm -hmm. that I feel is a benefit now to the communities and things, you know. That, that would keep you yes, more involved yeah, yes. like you were to before. keep all people involved, okay. you know. What about New Pilgrim? You talked about uh, being at New Pilgrim and the movement there. Let's go back some mm -hmm. when you were younger mm -hmm. and uh, in high school or whatever and, and what happened at New Pilgrim, the singing and, and the praying and Reverend King and Reverend Smith. Talk, talk to us. Let's share that with us. Okay. Um, like I said, during that time, like my porch and the front entrance of the church is, you, you, I, I can sit on the porch and just look right straight across the street. And for, I think, the first meeting they had over there, I sit on the porch and I observed, I heard the singing, I heard, it, you know, the speakers and stuff there. And the next time they had the movement, I, you know, I went over. And as I went in, I seen, if I can remember, it was Carlton Reese and uh, Sneed and all of them. They was Mr. over Sneed, the choir. Mr. Sneed was the, the organist for New for the Church? Yes. Okay. And uh, I saw them uh, directing the choir and they're singing and they had their black and white on. And I was very enthused, which I did sing with them for a while. Okay. okay, and uh, N.H. Smith, my pastor, was the, uh, I think, secretary or something for that at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to talking and asking him questions. But like I said, I had already heard King speak. And I think the next month or so, they had something at New Pilgrim where they walked down to Memorial Park. And I think that's when I first was arrested oh. at Memorial Park with uh, King, Shadowsworth, Abernathy, uh, Reverend Smith and uh, Andrew Young, mm -hmm. Jesse Jack, all those went to jail the same day from Memorial Park. Oh. But I can't re remember why we marched to Memorial Park. It was a, a holiday or something, you know. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I was a child, but every time they went or did anything, I was right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the march on Washington, uh, my church sent four buses, and I mean eight buses, oh. and I went on it. I enjoyed it. But uh, like I said, it was just so much that that neighborhood at the time was involved with the movement. And by me being uh, living in that community, mm -hmm. it uh, en enthused me. You know, I was very inquisitive, so I just got involved, you know. What about before when you were marching and the, everything and, and the demonstrations? Is there anything that you kept that you had from back then that you... Look back at a program. Uh, before or... I moved back to California, I had some of my signs. Mm -hmm. I also had um, some of the T-shirts yeah. of the SCLC movement. I uh, had some uh, the shoes that I wore to Washington because I had walked them. Because mm -hmm. if, if I had the book, we had a souvenir book. But right okay. there in the middle of the picture where uh, that waterfall was, that's where we stopped and took our shoes off and put our feet over in the water there. And I had that picture left. 
Okay, so you still do you still have yes, those I things? Yes, I still have it. Yes. So what do you think you'll do with them? You think you'll keep them? Do you well, think you'll I, I, donate I was them showing them or? to my kids, my grandkids, and all. And uh, I think my my son has it now. I, you know, he wanted to have a copy made off of it. Mm -hmm. And so I guess you know we'll keep them in the family for right now. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you'd like to share with us about during the time of the movement? Yes, it's a couple of things that I would. These people are the deceased, but they were the backbone to me. Like I told you, my m mother and them did not want me into the movement. But there were two ladies, they were older people, and each time they had a workshop, or they knew we were getting ready to go to Mobile, Selma, uh, Florida, or something for a workshop, uh, they would pack lunches, clothes, and food, you know, cook food and all for mm -hmm. us. And I would like to share those people names and uh, be in remembrance. Uh, Mrs. Ida Mae Simpson and Miss Amanda Russell, you know, okay. we used to call her Mandy. Okay. And uh, they were very enthused with the movement. And also they were each morning, they would be at 16th Street to help take the registration of the people that were going out to demonstrate. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Well, we certainly thank you for sharing with okay. us today. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that what you've said here was, was really important. I think when, when you talk about youngsters, you mentioned about your children and yes. your grandkids. Uh -huh. What would you like them to think about in the age that they are about the movement now and getting involved? What would uh -huh. you like to say to young kids today? Okay. Um, what I would like to say is the kids today need to form their own uh, uh, Union as far as taking care of each other, you know, you, you know, it's all about you being your your brother's keeper mm -hmm. You know and instead of you know all this violent that we are doing today They need to take a look at you know if I see one of my uh, uh, Friends yeah. off into something I should go to him because maybe I could get through because I'm his age You see what mm -hmm, I'm saying mm -hmm. and where in a grown person. They're not gonna listen and so I want to say to them, if they need uh, anything out of this life, they're going to have to work for it. And they need to help one another, you know. You don't think they do that enough? No, they it's don't do it enough. Mm -hmm. They don't do it enough. They don't do it enough. When you talked about the schools, too, before we end, let me ask you at least one more question. When you talk about respect in schools, what would you want to say to youngsters as it relates to, to school and, and teachers and the respect that was there or principles when, when you were? Okay, well, my opinion on that is, the young, and I know young people has to work too, okay? Mm -hmm. But just like, for instance, uh, they graduated from high school, mm -hmm. okay? They go into college, I think they go two years, and then they get the degree, and they're in, in the classroom, okay? And they might go into high school or uh, middle school, okay? And some of the kids in there are, are bigger and growner than they are, okay? <laughs> and so this is where the problem is, I feel, because every teacher I had was older teacher, you know, like mothers and fathers. So you think teachers, you should have, we should have in our school systems more mature Yes, teachers. yes, yes, yeah. And the, the younger teacher, they should, you know, kind of stay with the elementary field. Okay. That's, because that's these older, older kids is not going to listen to these young teachers. Okay. Well, you we know, and then they're not going to be educated because uh, who is she to tell me? And they might see them in the club, the same place they was at, you know. <laughs> okay. And so this is, these are things that I see in the community that is a problem when we didn't have this coming up. Okay. You know. We certainly thank you for, okay. for being with us. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs>